Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are doing our annual candle making. Um, if you're new to the channel, you haven't been around for a while, every Christmas time, Christmas season, uh, I make a bunch of candles and give them out to uh, friends, family. It's just like stocking stuff or gift type things. They've originated over the years, so I know absolutely nothing about candle making other than me just kind of stumbling through it every year and kind of learning from previous years. But this year, I put a little research into it. So, as a backstory, real quick, um, our first candles kind of started out like this as kind of like survival type candles. So, it was just melting some beeswax with a little bit of like a tiny little wick in it. And this was it, just a tiny little, like, I don't know what that is, maybe one, two ounce can or something, little tin thing. And I made a whole bunch of these and threw them in my packs and they were cool for, for that, but not the greatest gift to get on uh, Christmas. It's essentially a tea light, right? Big deal. So the next year I did these again because I ordered like 200 of them in usual fashion on Amazon. So the next year I stole a bunch of my wife's essential oils, don't tell her, um, and put some of the oils in it, right? So now it became a little scented candle. Um, and that was a little bit nicer, at least it had a scent to it, but um, I stole her stuff for like diffusing, so I put like two, three drops in them, so it was like kind of scented, you know? Um, last year we upped our game a little bit we made these larger cans. Um, I went with black, real fancy, um, and I put a whole bunch of oil in each one of them, and they still, this was one from last year, this is marshmallow, um, and it still smells amazing. Um, the problem with last year's was I tried to get fancy and put a cedar wick in them because it was supposed to like give this crackling effect and stuff. Um, but I heard from somebody that I gave one to, um, that, hey, the wick kind of burns real low, you know, and it doesn't work that well, and it's not like getting hot enough to melt the, melt the wax around it. The greatest teacher failure is. So the cedar wicks were kind of a fail last year, or maybe I just needed more for this size of a, of a can or something, or I guess a vessel, like we should be calling it. So this year I upped my game. No more beeswax. Um, when I made this vest, uh, we, we melted a bunch of beeswax and I had some subscribers comment on my video and said, dude, you're gonna burn your garage down. <laughs> you need to start double boiling that. So this is a pot that we melt our wax in, um, but I do have a pot over here, boiling water. I'm gonna put this in the pot of boiling water because yeah, wax is flammable, right? So you don't want to get that wax too hot. And if you remember, if you were around last year when we did these, we did get a couple batches too hot and we wound up like burning the wax and it had a weird burnt smell to it. So let's fast forward to this year. What are we going to do this year? So this year I went all out and got some better vessels. So what are these? These are... I don't even know how much, they don't say how many ounces they are, but we got like frosted black matte glass vessels um, and they're much larger in comparison, right? So here's the evolution, right? They're taller and then we got like a wood bamboo top. Um, my plan is to uh, use my brand and brand it. When I ordered them though, they were supposed to be three and a half inches wide that is not three and a half inches. That's probably more two and a half. That's what she said. I've put my brand up to it and I think it will be pretty close, but I have to like get it just right. So I'm probably gonna mess a bunch of them up. Last year with the essential oils, we had those like little bottles, those little bottles of oil. And I wound up taking like the little dropper thing out of it and just trying to like pour in each one because we started like putting drops in and it was like a nightmare counting that and I wanted a lot of oil in this wax so that it would um, uh, smell good, right? So this year I'm only going with two scents. I've got vanilla and cedar wood. 
these are not the little traditional jars. I got like a Mondo bottle of vanilla essential oil. And instead of putting like 10 drops in, I'm gonna put one of these entire things in each candle. So that should just give it a really good smell. Um, I got vanilla for the ladies, right? And I got cedar wood for the men um, was my initial plan. What I think I'm going to do is do three vanilla, three cedar wood, just whole candles, right? And then for the rest, I'm going to do um, like half and half. So we're gonna layer like the bottom cedar wood and the top vanilla and try that. Instead of the cedar wicks last year, I just got some regular wicks now. So those should be fine and they're made for this size of a vessel. So it should melt all the wax cleanly. We've been using beeswax for the past few years and it has like a yellow hint to it and stuff like, you know, like that. It's just yellow, right? Um, I wanted to go, since I'm going kind of classier this year, I've got the white glass and everything. I kind of spared no expense and I got a giant brick of this. This is, now I can't even remember what it's called. Hold on. This is an 11 pound brick of coconut, apricot, luxury candle wax. I did not know they made candle wax out of coconut and apricot. Smooth, very, very smooth stuff, very classy. I'm learning a lot from you right now, dude. We are joined by the lovely assistant. Hi. Hi. All right, today we're making candles. We went through all that. We're ready to go. We've got uh, our wax unboxed over there. I've cut out some small sections. Assistant, this pot is nice and cool. Nothing to worry about. Can you take this pot and put those four big chunks of wax in there, please? Sure. I'm gonna get, yep, you can use it with your hands and just pop them in. All right, so we've got four big chunks of wax in here. I think that might be enough to fill one candle. This might be a long process but let's get started. Um, that actually might be better if we do one pot at a time, because we can put the oil in the pot and mix it through before we pour it. So the assistant has been kind enough to get all of our vessels ready and cleaned and wiped out. So we are going to get this in the double boiler, start melting it down now, and then we will start with our first candle. You know what I know we need? We have a little uh, holder to put, that make sure the, the uh, wick doesn't melt down when we put it in. So I've got to find that. So basically this goes in here and then there's like a bracket that holds it in place. So when you pour the hot wax, it doesn't like melt down into the candle. Where so even we, are those? We used it last It's time. up in the rafter, I've got to get it. Okay, so I'm gonna get this boiling in the process while that's boil or melting. I'm gonna get the wick thing out and we should be ready to go. Let's do it. We are finally melted. The assistant has her oil ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna take our pot of wax out of the boiler and assistant very carefully, cause this is very hot now, please put in four full droppers in there. One, two, three, four. All right, close that up. I'm gonna stir this a little bit, stir it through. I'm gonna give it a little test smell. It smells pretty good. I think we should go five? Yeah, maybe six. Maybe six? It smells pretty good. I'd say give it give it one more. We'll say five. You know what? Give us go six. That way we got three in each pot when we do the mix. Very good. Okay. Let's stir that through. Now we've got our pot or vessel ready. It's considered a vessel. Now we're just going to fill it with wax. I'm going 
point, this one's gonna be all vanilla, so I'm gonna fill it to about a half an inch from the top. Then we're going to take our wick, put that in down to the bottom, put our wick holder over the top, doing our best to kind of center it. Okay, so I've got these little sticky uh, double-sided tape things. I'm gonna try that too. I'm gonna stick it right in the middle like that. That should be good. And then I have got a clothespin. There we go. That'll hold it perfect. And then I can pour the wax with the candle being held. Again, we're filling to about a half an inch. We want enough room so that the, the lids can go on. And we'll let that cool. So that was pretty much a pot. Um, I'm gonna do one more vanilla. And oh, you know what? I'm gonna do the half layer. So I'm gonna make another pot now, melt it down and put some more vanilla in. So I will come back when we have another pot ready to go. Okay, lessons are being learned here, but we're, we're making it work. We've got two full jars or candles full of vanilla. One, well actually three full ones. They are currently cooling. We've decided to go from six droppers eight droppers full of the oil just to give it more of a kick as far as the scent goes. Um, I only have one of those wick, I only have one of these like metal wick holders. So I tried with the uh, clothespin trick that I've done in the past, but these these jars are, are um, just about the size of a clothespin. So I can't rest it across the top. Um, so I've had a couple that have kind of sunk down and I've had to like rescue them out of the wax. So we're, uh, you know, we're learning. But it's all I got, so I'm doing what I have. So I've got four of these I need to fill halfway up with vanilla and then the rest, everything else will be, we'll switch over to cedar wood. So here we go. Hopefully these work. With that, that should be the end of our vanilla. Now we can switch over to cedar wood. Um, I'm having to put just a little bit of extra water in every few pots because this is just steaming away. I'm probably moisturizing this wood very well. Okay, let's cut another pot of wax, and get the cedar wood melting. I've also back here, if you could tell, I don't know if you can see in the camera or not, but I've got the brand going. Um, and I figured out, I've got the brand pretty good on there. I can't bring it down center or you, it'll cut off the bottom of the logo. So I'm putting it at the top and then I'm gonna put a sticker down here with the scent. I figure that'll work pretty well. I'll show you how I'm doing these brands now. So take a lid and I try to get the lines cause these are like bamboo wood. So I wasn't sure how they were gonna take the brand but essentially I'll take that, take my brand, kind of heat it evenly, and then I'm then lining it up. I could just see the top of the mountain. So I'm trying to center that. 
Nope. See? I fucked this up. All right. So then I'm pressing down. I'm kind of leaning back and forth, side to side, trying to make sure that I'm getting good pressure all the way around. <coughs> oh, that one got too hot. But it's okay. Because then I can take just some like 220 sandpaper. Yeah, so turns out kind of pretty, pretty good. It's up at the top, branded. I messed up a little bit there, but it, it's barely legible anymore. Uh, you just sand it a little bit if you go too dark and it, it brings everything back down to like nice crisp areas. As long as you're not moving your brand around a lot, it just kind of scorches the outsides a little bit. You sand that down and you get a nice, nice color, nice sharp lines right back. So I'm gonna do that for all of these and see how they turn out. It wouldn't be a project we did if it wasn't a little messed up. So when you are, um, when you're taking these off, be cautious. The top might look cool, but the internal temperature might still be liquid. So don't like, you know, stab it expecting to, for it to be solid all the way through or something. And then you wind up burning yourself. Yeah, I do these every year. I learn a little bit every year. I should probably talk to somebody who actually makes these things for a living and, uh, you know, figure out how to do them the right way. But, you know, it's just, I, I make these every year. I kind of enjoy it. It's kind of therapeutic, relaxing a little bit. So I do these as a, uh, just, you know, kind of a nice thing I just kind of give to, to people. I'll throw them as stocking stuffers or whatever. So I'm not, you know, selling them or anything. So if I was, I would, uh, you know, try to make them better, but you know, they are what they are. So I'm happy with them. I think this is, uh, probably going to be the nicest year every year they get a little bit better so but now would be a great time to comment down below do you make anything to give out at christmas time um i've been having a conversation with uh friends and family lately about christmas and you know what it's supposed to be about and stuff and, and i am in no means the guy to say you know, oh, Christmas should not be commercialized or anything. Cause like I grew up in a home that, you know, Christmas was a spectacle every year. We come down, there was pie, mountains of gifts and things. So, you know, I'm not one of those people, but um, I do find I'm thinking more lately about doing something along the lines of, um, making I, I the past few years I found myself making more gifts for people I, I feel when I get something that's handmade from somebody it could be you know a board that somebody painted something on it means more to me than some something that was bought at a store or something you know somebody took sat down and took some time to make you something it just means a little bit more to me um, and those imperfections and things make it give it more character and make it more meaningful you know so i've been going down that route lately and um i'm not fully committed yet we're still you know buying the kids gifts and things but um for certain people and stuff i've been talking with them and we're okay with just hey we're just gonna make each other something this year and that's it you know and that's what christmas is going to be about i like to get back to something more along those lines of just um, taking the commercialization out of Christmas and get back to meaningful things to give to somebody. So this is my dipping a toe into that kind of, that idea, right? So we've got candles in the past. I've made, um, you know, wreaths and signs and, and other things, you know, spoons and things or whatever I can make out of wood. Um, I've made and given as gifts uh, snowman last year. Check out those videos if you're interested. So I am just gonna continue doing this. I'm gonna do the next round is all gonna be cedar wood oil, but it's just gonna be just like this. Um, I'll come back when we're all kind of done, branded, everything's poured and cooled and we're ready for the next step of just like trimming the wicks and putting stickers on and stuff. So. I'll be back in a minute.
well for you it'll be like now all right so we made 12 candles we have six that are vanilla and cedarwood mix we have three that are straight vanilla and three that are straight cedarwood um, once they've cooled down i'd like to go around and i'll put two drops of oil on top of each one just so that when they pull that cap off and they smell it because you know that's what they're going to do when they get a candle um, to get that real good scent and that aroma so i've done that um, we had a little bit of wax left so i wanted to get to so we still have five pounds ish probably half so this was 11 pounds so probably five five and a half pounds of wax left so that's good to know so i can i don't have to buy wax next year or i might even make some more later if these uh go over well um i learned a lot on the branding i branded all the, the caps with the logo um i think i'm going to go through with like a sharpie uh later like a real fine thin sharpie and write the scents just hand write them on figured that'd be cool a little personal touch um so I wanted, I had like a little corner left of the uh, of the wax and I wanted to finish it so I could square it up nice. So I had three tins left from last year, these little metal ones. So I just poured those. These two are just straight vanilla. And this one, uh, my wife came out and put a bunch of patchouli in this one, so, and vanilla. So it's patchouli and vanilla mix. We'll see how that goes. Um, I think the only thing left to do now is cut the wicks. But that ain't my job, so. Assistant! Assistant! Everybody, welcome back to the assistant. Hi. Just took a little break. You um, had to. You had to, yeah. Um, so, this took a while. Um, so, you have your custom wick cutting scissors ready? Ooh, fancy. Oh, careful, those are very sharp. All right, so, what I need you to do I will get I'll do one for an example to show you okay you need to take these fancy scissors and these are still some of these might be a little bit soft so we don't want to pull on this wick too much but we want to basically come in and see how it's kind of like level with the glass yeah so we're gonna go that and then we're just gonna go down just a little bit okay and cut it off like that okay and that leaves us our candle ready to go these two are still, these three are still cooling a little bit, so I need you to do these, all right? When you sit here, I'm gonna move there pretty much, these are solid, but the, probably by the time you're done cutting the rest, those will be ready to go. Oh, shoot, I need to make sure this one, I don't get confused. That one's mama's hippie candle. Perfect. All right, that's it, assistant. What do you think? These candles are my favorite. They're your favorite. Yeah. Like I, like, I like the vanilla right here, and I like the pine one right here. I like those two legs, and I like the like mini ones, so those can be like for traveling. For traveling candles? Hey, mm -hmm. I, that might work. That is it for today. We've got 12. 15-ish candles. 12 good candles made, three little spare ones that I'll probably just end up burning myself. One of them's a little low, so. But that's it for today. Uh, if you like this type of content, subscribe down below. Um, how to make scented candles. Give me comments. Uh, what kind of scented candles do you like? What's your favorite scent? Um, if I look at my demographics, I definitely have more men subscribing to my channel than women so this may be out of the realm of what we're used to uh, from this channel but um, every year I tend to do this at Christmas I kind of explained why earlier um, but I enjoy it uh, it's something relaxing and, and peaceful to me and I, I think this is pretty cool so I am just gonna grab a sharpie I think a little fine tip sharpie I've got and I'm gonna write the scents on just by hand I think that would be kind of cool to do um, and give it that more kind of like a personal touch. So I'm going to do that and then uh, I will disperse these throughout the Christmas season here um, and give them to close friends and family. 
So, and maybe I'll stash one. So, given that, that's a good segue into right here. Look for this thumbnail. I don't, I, I don't know how to make them clickable yet. Um, but look for this thumbnail because I want to give things to you. I have a current giveaway going on my site right now, or my channel right now. When I get to 500 subscribers, which is not far off, we are almost to 400, which is immensely humbling and, and thankful, but we're almost to 500. We're almost at four right now, which if the channel keeps growing the way it has, we've gained almost over 150, I think, subscribers in like a month. So we could get to 500 super quick. So anyway, look for this thumbnail, click the video, comment on it. I'm giving away free military tactical brand new bags that you cannot buy on the market anymore. They are sold out everywhere. The company's out of business, never to be seen again. I have a bunch brand new, wanna give them to you. Maybe when you win it, if you win it, there might be a scented candle in it. Um, I might put more stuff in the bag as I ship it. So. I'm not promising anything, but you know, knowing me, I'm going to put some extra stuff in there for you too. So anyway, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff down below. I'll see you on the next one. Well, back to chores.